All right, now with all of the formalities out of the way, let's do this! Ouch! Contra is so goddamn fun, but I shouldn't have to tell you that. The game has a simple concept of going around killing aliens and other... stuff. Pretty much just walk from left to right and kill everything on the fucking screen. Like literally everything. People. People behind guns. Stationary guns. Fucking pink dandelions. And walls. Because I walls are evil, I guess. I don't know. You see, the basic thing about video games is that you have to think about the situation you're in and come up with a means of action so you could progress and win. You couldn't really just go in without a strategy. You'd get your ass kicked and die. Damn it! But Contra kind of allows you to have that headstrong attitude while playing. You have a projectile weapon, which already helps a ton. And you can also pick up power-ups along the way to upgrade and make your gun even more awesome! What kind of fucking voice is that? And the enemy fire is not only slow, but pretty big on some occasions, giving you more than enough time to avoid them. But don't you fucking think for one second that that makes this game easy or boring. Because it... it doesn't. You see, the game only lets you have three lives and three continues. That means if you get hit three times, you gotta restart the whole level over again. And you make that same fuck up three times, that's it! G game's over. So the game's hard. Unless you use the Konami code that gives you 30 extra lives and makes your whole life a lot fucking easier. The game was so simple and basic, yet completely enjoyable at the same time. That was a combination of things you don't see too often. I mean, just two years prior to Contra, a game was released called Ikari Warriors. It was a guy in a bandana going around shooting things. The concept was basic and simple and even kind of fucking looks like Contra, fucking in a few ways. It was, it was, uh, it, it was boring as shit. I don't know what it was that made this game so, yeah. Maybe it was the slow gameplay or its repetitive nature or the unappealing visuals that made it so, yeah. But Contra, however, just seemed to get it right. About a year later, Konami released a sequel called Super Contra. It was basically the same game as the first one, just harder and a code that would give you 10 lives as opposed to 30. Shit. Then this one came out and, I'm sorry, no. Never mind, this one doesn't count, never mind. Fuck this game! We're moving on! Hit the fast forward button to 1992. This game called Contra 3 The Alien Wars comes out and you're like, Whoa! I thought this marvelous piece of shit was Contra 3. Now this one comes out and says it's the third one? What? Which one is the real one? It's this one. This doesn't exist, remember that? So you put in the cartridge, turn on the Super Nintendo and- Whoa, holy shit, aliens! And they just leveled an entire fucking city? And then the spawn of Satan comes out and you're like, oh, it's on. And then when you start the game, it's just as intense as the intro foreshadows. Seriously, look at all the stuff going on here. I can't even keep up. Like, what the fuck am I fighting? A robotic turtle or something? That's cool. I'm down. I can party with it. Now on the basis, you might say this game is exactly the same as the first one, just with better graphics. And that's where you'd be wrong, motherfucker! The game actually added new elements of gameplay, such as grabbing onto poles or ceilings and moving on them in a monkey bar-like fashion, destroying buildings, destroying the scenery. There were also new styles of levels to be played. You know, sometimes walking can get boring and maybe you just need to ride a missile. Oh my god, I'm on a missile! Or ride a motorcycle, or play in a bird's eye view and... Oh god. <laughs> it's little additions like that that help break the game of its repetitive nature and help enhance its enjoyability. Speaking of repetitive nature... Nice, that was actually a smooth transition. Give me five, me! Ouch! The game is still a run and gun, but in Contra 3, they managed to make it a little more monotonous than the first one. Aw oh, man, why you gotta be like that? Here's a few reasons why. Number one! Bullets! <coughs> Alright, I won't shout anymore. Number one, the bullet size. In Contra 1, the bullets were so tiny, you couldn't shoot aimlessly and hope to hit your target. You had to position yourself and aim your weapon accordingly if you wanted to hit something. Contra 3 threw that right out the goddamn window. Your bullets are so huge, you just have to fire in the general direction, and you'll hit your target 9 times out of 10. Number 2! I, I lied, I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep shouting! The fucking weapons themselves! Okay, so in the first game, your default weapon was like this. Pea shooter? That you had to press the button every single time you wanted it to fire? And it was weak? And the bullets were tiny? 
and it sucked! Come on, man, give me a break! No, shut the fuck up, pea shooter! But in Contra 3, the game starts you out with the machine gun that fires at like a million miles an hour! The game pretty much makes you invincible from the start. Yo, are you serious? Aside from starting the level over, there's no real repercussions when you die. In the first game when you were killed, you were forced to go back to the worthless pea shooter and be more careful. Maybe you had an upgrade you really liked, but since you messed up, you had to go all the way back and find it again. It made you play a little more cautiously. In Contra 3, it didn't really fucking matter if you died, because when you respawn, it's like, whoops, you start out with, like, the strongest weapon in the game again, and who the hell cares? Number three! Power-ups are too powerful! Ugh. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, no shit, that's the idea. But, just hear me out. Let's take one last look at the machine gun. Shut up about the machine gun! Sorry, man. Here's how fast the machine gun fires in Contra 1. Pretty slow. Now here it is in Contra 3. The difference is fucking ridiculous, and remember, this is your default weapon. And how about the flamethrower? In the first Contra, it was a piece of shit and had this swirly ass pattern. Ugh, I hate this thing, it sucks. Oh, I'm actually killing things with it. But here, it's just this steady flame that annihilates everything it comes in contact with. And all you have to do is hold the button down. Hey, this is actually pretty fun. And what about the spread gun? What about it? The spread gun is arguably the best power-up in the game. It shoots numerous bullets at multiple altitudes, and it's real fucking fun to shoot. But check out the range. In Contra 1, here's the gun when it fires. Anything around this vicinity is dead. It's powerful and has a fair span of fire. But in Contra 3, j just look at this. Look at this! Alright? Look how much space the bullets from the spread gun take up. It's like 90% of the screen. Believe me, I know my numbers. I have a degree in fucking, ge what, fucking geography, I think it is. I don't know. I'm not kidding. Anything within this vicinity is fucking dead. Wait a minute. That's, that's me. Now listen, these games do have little imperfections, but no shit, what games don't? Every single game out there has flaws, and no matter how little or big the flaw is, they're still there, and more often than not, they'll usually handicap the game's enjoyability. But in Contra 3's case, the flaws honestly didn't matter. The game is still completely enjoyable and full of intense action. There's never really a dull moment where you're just sitting around thinking, Ugh, this is fucking boring. You're usually gonna be on the edge of your seat going, Whoa, fucking Skeleton Man! The point is, buy the game, well, maybe not for that much, put it in your SNES and have a go. Believe me, you will have a fun and magical experience. Ugh, this game sucks! Hi. If you like this video, then don't subscribe to me. Click that left link on the screen or in the description box to visit Ego Raptor's channels, one of which includes Game Grumps! Yay! Go subscribe to those. Have no idea what the hell this video is even a tribute to? No problem, click that link on the right to see a sequelitis video. Also, click Luigi for something beautiful.